ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಆನ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ನಿಮಿಲಾ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ ರಿವಿಷನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿ ಬಯಾಲಜೀಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನೈನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಟಜೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎನ್ಹಾನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫುಡ್ ಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ನೋ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನ್ಹಾನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಫುಡ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆನಿಮಲ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆನಿಮಲ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ರಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ food enhancement i mean enhancement of strategies in food production so it is a pr- practice of breeding and raising livestock so animal husbandry is uh, bringing up the livestock and it is also the breeding of the live animals i will include breeding of the livestock that is cows buffaloes pigs etc poultry farming and fisheries so we are cross breeding many of the animals like of the same breed in order to produce more enhanced animals or the more production of milk to take place or more production of poultry to happen or more production of eggs to take place now coming to farm management if we see dairy farm management as i told you milk yield so it is completely dependent upon the quantity quality of the breed selected so now this quality will encompass yielding potential and disease resistant breed so only production of milk is not the vital thing but here the milk should also yield the potential nutrition value and also it should be disease resistant i mean the cow or the breed which is giving the milk shouldn't be diseased so this is how we are going to see f- dairy farming management now coming to care of cattle so proper accommodation should be given to the cattle we cannot just leave them however they want and just feed them whatever they are feeding on uh, like plastics and etc so adequate water should be provided because water is the one which will help more in lactation and then feeding in a scientific manner like we have to feed the proper food not like just giving anything for the cow to produce milk so this is the quality of fodder which we give hasuvige hakuvanta bhusa anta karitivi quality of the fodder so we have to take care of the fodder which are which we are going to feed for that particular cattle in order to get a res- disease resistant and a nutrition valuable milk and hygienic conditions and visit by a veterinary doctor is very much important just like how we rear our kids nowadays animals also should be reared just like those we have to take them to the veterinarians to check out if it is diseased or if it is an healthy cow or if the healthy cattle and we have to maintain hygienic conditions in order to avoid diseases to be getting attacked and uh, we have to maintain its fodder also in order to check if the quality of the milk is not going to get reduced now all these processes nowadays have become mechanized and they are properly recorded so now in those days we were not able to monitor these properly but now all of these are mechanized i mean sucking of milk is also being mechanized therefore we have a proper record keeping for these to be followed coming to the dairy farm management poultry will also include meat from birds like chicken ducks and turkey so these are the most famous meats available and chicken is very much oftenly fed by all of us now the main emphasis in poultry farming is the selection of disease free and healthy breed so in whichever farming it is dairy farming or if it includes the poultry farming the very most important thing is disease free breed so it shouldn't be diseased it should be disease resistant breed and should be a healthy breed now safe farm conditions and proper feed water producing and hygiene is very much important for the poultry farm management too now coming to the animal breeding what does breed actually mean so breed is a group of animals which are related by decent and similar characters animals characteristic animals like the general appearance features size etc if you can see donkey and a horse being breed they are similar in their characters i mean like they are similar in their size they are similar in their uh, structures etc so just like that if we have to breed an animal it should be decent and should be similar in most of the characteristics which is related to the same breed of the other animal 
Now coming to the aims of breeding. Why is breeding necessary? It is to increase the yield of the animal. So the quantity of the animal should be raised to, in order to obtain the proper yield of what we want. Now to improve the desirable qualities in producing. Like if you want more production of milk, we have to breed the animals in order to get more yield of milk. Therefore, it is like the desirable qualities which we want to produce, we are going to breed animals. Now breeding is of two types, one is inbreeding and outbreeding. Please don't get confused with inbreeding and outbreeding. It is very simple, inbreeding is with the same species and outbreeding is with the different species. It is not like inbreeding is internal and outbreeding is external. So coming to uh, inbreeding, it is a mating of more closely related individuals of the same breed for four generations. As I told you, it is the breeding of the same species for up to four generations which are very closely related to each other. Now coming to superior females and superior males are identified and mated. Now superior males and superior females are mated for up to four generations. So superior females will produce more milk per lactation. So if we are going to, I mean if it is going to lactate at once, it will produce more amounts of milk compared to the normal ones. Now coming to superior males, they give rise to a superior progeny. So they are going to give rise to a superior progeny where these can be used in uh, field works and all. Now inbreeding will increase the homozygosity and it will evolve a pure line. So what is the main aim of inbreeding? It is like it will in include, I mean it is going to increase the homozygosity that is the similar breeds and will accumulate superior genes but will also threaten to accumulate harmful recessive genes also. So it will not only acquire the superior genes which are helpful for us but it will also accumulate the recessive genes which are also the I mean which it consists of the characteristics which are not exposed. Now continuous inbreeding will reduce the fertility and productivity also. Now this is a problem called the inbreeding depression. So continuous inbreeding will lead to the depression of it. That is it will reduce the fertility of that particular breed and it will also um, on a prolonged breeding it will decrease the productivity rate also. Now coming to outbreeding, so it will include outcrossing like or crossbreeding and interspecific hybridization. So it is a crossbreed as I told you with two species, different species we are going to breed. Now outcrossing, what is outcrossing? It is a mating between animal of the same breed but they do not have common ancestors for four to five generations. So outbreeding is something wherein we are going to mate animals which are not of similar ancestral trees for four to five generations and it is usually used for animals which will have below average productivity and growth rate. So these are usually done, I mean this type of outbreeding uh, mating is done for the animals which are of having high, an average, I mean below average productivity values and they have a lesser growth rate. Now coming to crossbreeding, this is the mating between superior male of one breed with superior female of the another breed. Now superior qualities of both the breeds will combine and this is known as hybrid vigor. Remember the superior quality of, a one, of one breed and the superior quality of another breed is mated together and it is called crossbreeding and these superior cross qualities of both the breeds is called the hybrid vigor. Now progeny so formed is called the hybrid. Therefore, hybrid vigor, the products formed by this hybrid vigor procedure is the hybrid ones. We can see hybrid uh, vegetables, hybrid animals like that. So a hybrid may be used as it is or it may be further subjected to inbreeding. So this hybrid product which is obtained by crossbreed can be used as it is and it can also be inbreeded with the same species and then can be used by as a product. Now example is the Hazardale sheep which is the hybrid of a Bicanary Eaves and Merino Rams. So these are the two different species which are mated producing the I mean these are two different species of the sheep. Okay. Now interspecific hybridization if we have to see males and females of the different but 
related species are mated here so here the males and females are different but they are related species to each other now progeny will have desirable features of both the species so this progeny will have the relatable features of the different two parent cells so now if we see this progeny will have the um, characteristic features of both the species here if we take an example of a mule as i already told you it is the interspecific hybrid of a horse and a donkey so this mule is an inbreed of horse and a donkey and it is a sterile animal it cannot i mean it is not having any fertility rates now controlled breeding techniques if we have to see it is artificial insemination so the semen is collected from the male and it is injected into the reproductive tract of the females so here the semen of the male is collected and it is introduced to the reproductive tract of the females and this semen can be frozen for later use or it can be used immediately so the specimen semen which is collected can be used immediately or it can be stored for later uses now multiple ovulation embryo transfer that is mere technology so the cow is administered with fsh like hormones like follicular stimulating hormones which will induce the follicular maturity and the super ovulations so now in super ovulation instead of one egg cycle 6 to 8 eggs are produced per cycle so what will happen at the time of ovulation instead of one egg to be produced there is a release of 6 to 8 eggs per cycle so now the cow is either naturally mated with a superior bull or it is artificially inseminated as the artificial insemination technique is utilized here or it will be directly uh, mated with the bull now the fertilized egg is recovered at 8 to 32 cell stages and they are non surgically and transferred to the surrogate mother so now these cells which are uh, fertilized the fertilized egg at 8 to 32 cell stage is transferred non surgically and it is transferred to a surrogate mother here now using this technique high milk yielding breeds of the females and lean meat yielding bulls have been bred successfully so what is the use of this here we can produce high milk yielding uh, cows here so females and high me lean meat yielding bulls are been bred here now coming to the apiculture this is used for honeys now apiculture is a practice of bee keeping so this will involve the maintenance of bee hives for the production of honey as we can see bee hives are made by the bees and this needs a lot of maintenance to be carried out so there there has to be hygienic place and there has to be proper atmospheric conditions wherein it can produce i mean can suck the nectar from the flowers and make its bee hive proper in proper conditions so what is the use of apiculture honey has high nutritive value and medicinal value so the honey which is obtained by this technique apiculture technique will have an high nutritional and medicinal value now coming to honey bees which also produce the bees wax which is used in the preparation of polishes and cosmetics so bee wax is of high cosmetic value in the cosmetics industry so now if we check in the cosmetic industries this bee wax plays a very important role and most commonly the rare species of honey bees is apis indica so this is the indian breeds of bees now bee keeping is not labor intensive and it is relatively very easy but this requires some specialized knowledge about the nature and habits of bees since bees are very dangerous and their strings can also lead to death the maintenance of these should require some of the specialized knowledge about their behavior and the habits of bees you have to study well now selection of suitable location for keeping the beehives beehives cannot be uh, kept anywhere we want because they have to be very much specialized i mean they they need separate knowledge to be specialized i mean keeping in them and rearing those bees and therefore it needs a suitable location wherein it is not going to harm any of the human beings now catching and hiving of the swarms is required and beehive management during different seasons is very much important handling and collection of the honey and bee wax is much more important so you cannot just suck the honey or get the honey just like that you have to first uh, 
harvest the beehive properly and then have to collect it so it needs proper handling techniques too now coming to fisheries so including catching processing and selling of fishes shellfishes and other aquatic animals like prawn crabs lobsters etc all these will come under fisheries now edible fish water fishes are the catla and rohu which are most uh, commonly found fishes which we feed on now some of the edible marine fishes so yeah edible is something which we can consume so that is the meaning of edible okay edible oils edible wax edible um, your preservatives all those are the ones which when eat now edible marine fishes are the hilsa pomfret and sardines now aquaculture and pisciculture are the technologies to commercially rare fish so aquaculture and the pisciculture species is where this pisciculture name is uh, got from so now these are the commercially rearing techniques of fishes